I'm George Stauffer. I'm one of the founding members of Cars Curing Kids. I want to thank everybody for coming out to see the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. I have a connection with the movie because I used to own the black Le Mans winner. This goes back to 1982 when I was in California and usually I buy the Sunday papers in a city that I'm in because of the car section and Los Angeles usually has about a two inch car section. So in there was an ad for a 1963 Rolls Royce convertible. The ad was torn out, put in my shirt pocket, and a couple weeks later my wife found it and said, here, I found that when I was washing your shirt. So I called the gentleman that had the ad. When he asked me for my name, I told him George Stauffer, and he recognized it because he had heard that I had some GT40s. And he asked me, would you be interested in buying a bunch more? Well, I didn't think there were a bunch of more of GT40s even back then, but he had uh, been contacted by uh, some importers from Belgium that had a warehouse there and their investment advisor uh, had advised them to buy some old race cars because he thought they were gonna go up. So they did, they bought four cars uh, crated them, shipped them to Belgium to a warehouse, put them in a corner of the warehouse and just forgot about them. But four years later, he said, okay, it's probably time to sell these cars. And they put word out that these cars were for sale. Uh, at first, the price that they wanted was outrageous in my mind. And I had been looking for one of the cars, which was a Mark IV because I had a Mark II and I had a Mark I and I had a Mark III. Well, they would, wouldn't sell one, they wanted to sell them all, all or nothing. So I said, well, I'm really not interested. And about a month later, two months later, he called back and said they've become more reasonable with their prices. And reasonable is a matter of definition, but it was, reasonable enough that I wanted to look into it. So I called a friend of mine in Scotland who was the ultimate GT40 guru. He knew everything about every car and more so. <laughs> I made plans to go over, took one of my race mechanics with me and the gentleman from Scotland met us in Ghent uh, Belgium, where the cars were. He brought along a suitcase full of period photos of all the cars back in, uh, in the 60s, 66 basically. And so when we got there, we were in a warehouse that was basically empty, except these four crates were in the corner, stacked one on top of the other. So they came in with a huge forklift and took each one of the, the the crates down, put them out on the floor, gave us crowbars and said, we'll be back in a couple hours. We felt like kids at Christmas. We had these, these boxes. We weren't sure what was in there. They had told us in one crate was a 427 Cobra. In the other crate was the Mark IV that had won Sebring in 67. In the third box was one of the Gulf Mark I's. And in the fourth box, in the fourth crate, there was, they thought it was a Mark II, but they weren't sure because it was in primer, didn't have a chassis tag on it. And here you go, here are the crowbars. So we went to the first crate, opened it up, and we got the 427 Cobra, and it was like, eh, okay, just a Cobra, let's, let's move on. So the second one was, I don't remember the order, but let's say the Mark IV was in the crate. It was yellow. They knew what it was. It had been, obviously, in a crate four years. The tires were flat. The wheels were corroded, and it was dirty. Same thing with the 
golf car, wheels flat or tires flat, wheels corroded and just dirty. Well, we got to the fourth crate and sure enough, here was a Mark II, but it was all in primer. It had no chassis tag, so we really didn't know what it was. Well, my friend from Scotland started taking out his photos and comparing certain aspects of, of that car versus the other cars. At that, in 66, three cars were built by Shelby, three were built by Holman Moody, and then three were built by uh, a gentleman in England. So each one was built by a crew separately with no plans. And they said, here, you build, build the Mark II and you do it as a group. Well, each, each of the cars had certain characteristics because they were built by different people. So we compared the photos of the cars that ran at Le Mans and narrowed it down to this car had to be the, the winner, the 66 Le Mans winner. That we could tell by the roll bar, it had a uh, oil cooler scoop on the side that was different than the other cars and had three or four other things about it that only that car had. So my friend Ronnie Spain from Scotland finally said, I'm pretty sure this is the Le Mans winner. <laughs> so of course I said, quiet, they, nobody, nobody needs to know. And so I wound up buying the four cars and the cars were transported to the U.S. We started restoring the Mark II, which my secretaries called the black hole, because it, it needed, <clears throat> needed everything. But what we wanted to do was restore back to originality. We didn't want to widen the fenders. We didn't want a more powerful engine. We wanted it back to where it was in 1966. And it took three years, four years to do that. Finally, it was done. We took it to Road America, to the Friday night concourse, rolled it in late, and Saturday morning I was in it on the track. So I raced it for, I think, four years. And it got to the point where finally I, I had to quit driving it because everybody on the track wanted to beat the Le Mans winner. And they were doing not very smart things to, to try and do that. So I retired the car and the car sat basically in my showroom until 30 years later when I finally sold it. Thank you very much for coming to the premiere. If you enjoyed the movie, enjoyed the events, please, please put uh, something into the Cars Curing Kids buckets. Thank you very much.